Danny Day. It's about time, man. Well, man. there you go. <laughs> the minute we decided to do this, you were on that list, and uh, we knew you'd be a lot of fun, and we've enjoyed being around you, Appreciate relatively it. speaking, it. recent. Yeah. That, yeah. that we've, that at least I have known you. Well, yeah. But nice. you, you left an impression, yeah. well, Danny Day, and <laughs> uh, we're excited to have you in today. And I know the audience is looking forward to this too. Well, thanks, y'all. I hope I, uh, uh, y'all have had some great guys on here already. I've been watching, and and I just hope I don't bring your ratings too low. No, no man, not at all. No, <laughs> no you, there's only one way from bottom, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Come on. If the ratings were going to sink, it would be because of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, they survived three episodes of yeah. us. Yeah, so I, don't, I don't think no, the fourth I, I, one would have. Man, y'all been getting some great, great hits on online on Facebook yeah. and yeah. yeah as, as we record this, you know, we're wrapping up Pete Mandela week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and What's man, that? man, I learned a lot on that one. Yeah, that yeah. that went well. The same is going to happen for you, sir. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, yeah. same. I, All right. I promise we're going to do what we can. But uh, I like your attire. Yeah, yeah this thanks. is uh, this well, is a video. I'm... Jump to YouTube and and uh, see. Uh... Repping Memphis. Yeah. yeah. So t-shirt Memphis recording pressing. Yep. yep. Memphis record pressing. Where Tim Dills works. Yeah. And then uh, Sun and Studios. Hunt, and Sun. Yeah. So many musicians work at both of those places. Right. Yeah. Um all the tour guides at, at Sun, musicians. Mm -hmm. Um and and listen, if you're looking for a job, uh record, Memphis record pressing is is higher and they are growing like crazy i, I actually go. saw that on facebook that they were looking for people and uh, so. i asked him though because i'm retired now but i, I asked him i said well you got anything part-time and he just kind of chuckled I said, well <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a no uh, that's a no <laughs> so um but, but i guess the, the way that we met is that i i actually had you come out and, and do some photographs for us at the, well, Derek, at yep. the Derek, Derek the first Derek the Joseph sidecar show cafe yep sidecar uh, the, the south Derek haven the south yeah. haven location south haven. i found you on facebook i saw yep. how you were pushing bands and how you were supporting uh, the people that you worked did did photography for so so much, mm -hmm. and I had you come out, and it's been a friendship ever since. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I had a great time that night. It was my first time at Sidecar, the first time hearing Derek Joseph, and first time meeting all y'all. That's right. Yeah, made so, friends immediately, which did. I think is a common theme in your life. <laughs> well, uh, thanks. But yeah, same here. Like I remember Jeff telling me, "Hey, I hired this awesome photographer, Danny Day." And, you know, no disrespect. I hadn't heard of you. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. cool. Jeff's like, man, this guy goes everywhere. Yeah. I'm like, awesome, great. And then you showed up, man. I was like, oh, this guy's great. I yeah. really enjoyed working with well, you. Thanks. Night. Thanks. Uh, it's it's something I, I, uh, I only picked up about mm, seven, eight years ago, 2015, mm -hmm. uh, January. Um, a buddy of mine, Mark Parcell, had a, had a vision of doing a uh, singer-songwriter venue in memphis that um may go along the line of austin city limits however it hadn't quite got to that uh but he um put a put a um a rented a room right by the arcade across from the train station and called it south main sounds mm -hmm. and he um is not a musician but he just Loved music, Memphis music, um, supported music, and he's also a guy y'all need to get on here one day. But uh, he and I and uh, Brad Mathern mm -hmm. um, went to look at this building. The arcade owns that whole block, and they own that building. So we went to look at it, and Mark rented it immediately. And and we had our first show in January of 2015, and uh, they Brad dabbled in cameras because he and Mark both worked at Channel 5 uh, and a couple other TV stations. And Brad was a technical guy, and he had cameras. I mean, that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And so he said, you know, I won't be doing video. I won't be doing sound. We need somebody to shoot stills. I said, well, man, I I'd love to give that a, sh a, try a shot. Uh -huh. And um, <clears throat> so uh, that's how I got a camera in my hand. Started shooting South Main Sounds. And then um, one of our buddies played the shell. Mm -hmm. Levitt Shell, somebody's playing at Neil's, good on Neil's. I just started going all over town. Sure. So January of 2015. 2015. So we're working on 15, eight 17 years. years. Yeah. No, about no. eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Your math is off. <clears throat> yeah. It's oh. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but, uh, yeah, that's great, man. And, and basically self-taught. Self-taught. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Brad, Brad was my mentor of sorts. Uh, and he kind of gave me the, the nuts and bolts of it, and, mm -hmm. and then I just took off with it. Right. So from the start, 
it's always always been about music oh okay. yeah and musicians oh yeah there was was there a thought of something else or the, the way it just came into your life that just With was photography was? yeah <clears throat> no all music yeah, yeah. It, it was just um <laughs> it, it started when i was a kid and i didn't really realize it but uh, which we have an amazing photo album that we want to show should yeah. we just jump in now absolutely I mean, it seems well, like we're okay. there so yep. this yeah, is a uh, we're, we're going to be sharing um stills over yeah, like in post production yeah. above the video, yeah, but you if, can't, you can't. So check this out the, on YouTube, but also even just right now, um, you are holding up this I'm, old photo album with some seventy two pictures from uh, early seventies of uh, you going to concerts. Concerts, right? Grand Funk Railroad with Ariel Speed was my first show. There's Oyster Call, uh, Mountain, uh, Peter Frampton. Uh, it just goes on and on. Very Edgar cool. Winter, Rick Derringer, just. Just a ton of them, but right. but I just took the little Instamatic 126 yeah. camera with me, right, and 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 shot it. And yeah. but little did I know that that's really what I wished I'd have picked up and done for my for career. Yeah. So, uh, how many year span was that era oh, for that's, you? I don't know. It's several years, but when um, you were younger, yeah, yeah. when I was. A kid. So there was a large gap of time where photography just wasn't. No, really? I uh, yeah. There was a little time I had I had a uh, Canon AE one program back in the seventies, um, uh, and I dabbled with it with film, but I left it on the automatic mode all the time because mm -hmm. I was, film was expensive. And it, today, digital. I, I mean, I can come home with uh, with a thousand shots sure. after a night and just. Go, well, through, go through them. I, I have so a, a pretty photos. nice Nikon, and I still leave it on auto because I have no <laughs> yeah. idea what the hell I'm doing. So I just, yeah. you know, point and shoot and let the camera figure it out. Right. I know so. how to put these cameras on tripods. <laughs> right, right. No, um, but uh, well, that's fascinating. Uh, and it's it's interesting. I love. I wish people could actually see that album and see the pages. It's uh, it's, I, it's hell, a binder. It's 50, it's 50 years old. It's a binder, yeah. but the pages in this binder <laughs> are 50 yeah, years old. Are 50 years old, and they look 50 years yeah. old. <laughs> and I grew cool. up with a mom that took a lot of photos growing up, so we have stacks of albums. And it's so fun every once in a while to flip through and just look at your family, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think you know we're missing something with digital, like phones and taking pictures of the phones, because when I was a kid. And we'd go on a camping trip or yep. go to Disney. Well, I went when I was like eight. A month after you get home, all these pictures come in. Right. You know, and everyone sits around and, man, do yeah, you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Do you oh, remember yeah. this? Mm -hmm. You know, it was, an, it was a thing. Right. You, had, you couldn't wait. Yeah. You'd mail in all those rolls and then you get the photos later. Now you take a picture on your phone and no one ever and, sees and it. And you're right. posting it in five minutes. Or you're posting. <laughs> I mean, people are seeing it that way. Yeah. But yeah. The thought of like, hey, let's yeah. all sit down, guys. Hey, look at pictures. Yeah. Let's, you know, we went to a show last night. Let's share our pictures. Right. Right. <laughs> it yeah. just doesn't happen. You lose the communal thing. Right. 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 So, uh, you know, I, I miss the days of physical pictures and right. albums. Yeah. yeah. We met you through through the sidecar gig. Um, and then I quickly learned through us going to see original bands play and, and what you, the bands that you photographed. The Fast Mothers and Fever Tree are the first two to come to mind. I saw mm -hmm. so many photographs that that he was involved in, and well, we talked we talked to Dim uh, to Tim uh, about you doing the cover for the yes. last album, mm -hmm. which was really that was cool. Fun. Um, so yeah, tell us about that it's the shoot of that that album cover and how that came about. Well, Tim had hit me up um, early on, and uh, things kind of got stalled for a little while, and and then they couldn't get the location they wanted, and then. Finally, Mark Bertaldo, the, the guitarist, uh, said, we'll just do it in our living room. Well, uh, it's Social Mediocracy is the band, is the album name. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, so their idea was to have a family, a mother, father, daughter, and son, and all on their own individual apparatus. Uh, device. Device. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And um, so um, we, we got uh, Tim's wife, Gina's, brother's family and they came in and uh we just had an afternoon of shoot and took two two or three hundred shots and um we would take some and do something a little different and take some more and keep looking at them on the computer and finally there was just this one where um their daughter was looking in the cell phone with 
he signed like this and, right. and I said that's the shot that's yeah. that's the one we got to go with that's cool so then they also had the idea to make some transition to it they uh dropped the background into black and white and left the family in color okay and so that that ended up being that one cover. Neat. that's so awesome it's it pretty cool and when did that album come out I can't uh, just remember. just last year. Okay, yeah. when we mm-hmm. had Tim Dills, we we played the title track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, great song. Oh, tight. And uh, Rocco, the bass. Yes. yes, phenomenal. Yeah. Oh yeah, Rocco and John playing Patterson in the together. mix. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm biased. I'm a bass player, but I think anyone can agree, the bass on that album is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, really is. It's, yeah, the whole album that way. Yeah. It's good. So uh, we. Uh, I met your dad. Uh, and we were at Neil's. And actually, hey, that was the show Pop that you took me to. Yeah. That was when I first discovered Fast Mothers, right. Every Mother's Nightmare, Elevation, Memphis. Mm-hmm. And what was the fourth band? Was there a fourth oh, one? Why are you going to do that to me? We <laughs> always do this on the Put mic. On spot. <laughs> we always make people feel bad because we'll forget a name, right? And well, it's, it's never personal. If we forget, it's not. Name, we're sorry. That's what I worried about all the way on the drive down <laughs> Yeah, there. it's all right. But, uh, but yeah. So uh, yeah, so we bump into you, and then you introduce your dad, and your dad is dad wonderful. Dad. Yeah, <laughs> Papa yeah. Richard, everybody loves Papa. Um, he he followed me and and Mark and Brad with our venture with South Main Sounds, and he had his front row seat, and actually he had, had his name on the seat. Uh, everybody knew that was Papa's seat, and yeah. um, he's front and center, and he's deaf. Yeah. Basically, he he, yeah. can't, he can't hear, but he right. may not understand the lyrics, but he knows the, the feeling of the tempo and, sure. and yeah. the, the music. Okay, but he uh, he he just was so so proud of what I, we all were doing, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, he he kind of followed me, and the next thing you know, he branches off and he's got his own music, musicians and bands he's following. <laughs> <laughs> he might come down to South Main Sounds and say, "Well, I'm gonna go down here for a little while. You wanna go?" No, Dad, I'm going home. Uh, <laughs> well, it's just it's neat. A he's fun. I enjoy right. talking with him. Oh yeah, and then to see you two together. Not having known, like, relatively speaking, I really don't know you and your dad. Right, uh, we've right. been to each other. Right. But it's so obvious that you guys have a really decent relationship. Oh, yeah. It's great. You know, a genuine great. relationship. And that's nice to see. Yeah. 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 He's, uh, <clears throat> he, they just recently, almost two years ago, moved to Roanoke, Virginia. Um, <clears throat> my stepmother's daughters are there and grandkids and kids. And they'd been here about 30 years. So they decided to, uh, Time, time to go be with her family. So mm-hmm. they moved over there. But I think the one caveat was dad said, anytime I want to go, I'm going. And he's 87. He drives a 12-hour drive over here. Wow. He gets around. <laughs> I mean, he looked mobile when I saw him. <laughs> I don't need to let my mother-in-law hear that. <laughs> yeah. She's 90, and I'm trying to get her to stop driving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not going to work. But uh, no, he's been a great supporter of mine and, and yeah. of the whole music scene as well. Awesome. Memphis so, music. so, Derek? Yeah, so let's yes. talk to us about okay. this. Okay, so let you brought some stuff with you. Uh, we already saw the photo <clears throat> album. Now, the next thing I would love to bring up for you is Valerie June. Well, and Val- tell us more about that person and, and why you want to bring her up. Well, well Valerie, um, I had just moved back from Little Rock in 2006, and we went to a, a, a bunch of us. We chartered a bus from Memphis to Helena, West Helena, Arkansas, to go see the— um, King Biscuit Blues Festival. Yep. It's a huge festival, annual festival in October. My birthday was in November. Um, walking along the streets, there's this cute little girl sitting there with a little amp and a guitar and short skirt and red cowboy boots and just singing her heart out and had such a crowd around her. And she, it, it was really before I think I even had a cell phone. Um, or if I did, I, I don't remember. But uh, so... She uh, she kept spitting out her phone number, though, and contact information. So I knew she lived in Memphis and in Midtown. And um, I thought, man, that'd be cool to have a, my 50th birthday party. Uh, and my buddy, we were going to have it at my buddy's house in Central Gardens. And so I contacted Valerie, and I said, would well, I be going too far out on a limb to ask you to uh, do a house concert for my birthday? And she says, no. And so... I met her at Otherlands uh, in Midtown. I, little, I, I little, love Otherlands. Little yes. coffee house. Yeah. Well, she she used to do poetry and, and songwriting there. And um, so I met her at Otherlands. And, and I said, Valerie, I don't even know what to offer you. Well, 100 bucks work? And she said, yeah, well, uh, within, within a short period of time after that party, she ends up 
going up to New York. Next thing you know, I'm seeing her on, on Jay Leno and David nice. Letterman. And, <laughs> and I'm watching the Country Music Awards one night, and there's Eric Church singing. And he's singing just an acoustic song. And then all of a sudden, the camera back pans out. And there's this beautiful girl in this red dress, and I get to look, and then it's Fowler. <laughs> so I text her the next morning. I said, "Was that you behind Eric Church?" And she goes, "Yeah, I'm on the tarmac in Vegas now, getting ready to head to Europe." Well, you know, since then, now she just recently opened for Dave Matthews. Man. She's played with Willie Nelson. But you launched her career. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. This is where the story is going. <laughs> well, you so, know, after, when she played my 50th birthday party, right. she said she would play my 60th. So well, when it. Uh, Came around, I um, got to thinking, you know, Valerie said she'd play, and I need to make this, you know, a lot mm. of fun. But I turned it into a benefit, and it was a big job. I had a lot of volunteers to help me. Uh, we had it at the warehouse. Uh, Chris, yes, Chris, Chris so Gates. let's bring that up. Um, so you brought the, uh, what would you call this? It was my, just my little, little junior poster of what I had, but we named it Daystock, and we had 12 bands play. And uh, we only charged ten dollars a head. And, where, and you said the warehouse. Where is the warehouse? It, it's down uh, at um, G. E. Patterson and and Front Street. Oh, uh, okay. So, by, also down so, by the so that's area. south. That's Main. main south, south Main. Main South, south, south Main, main area. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, so Valerie um, uh, played. She headlined it for me. I got um, a whole a whole slew of people to play that day. I had Brian Hayes and uh, Ross Drury. Ross Drury, I just photographed his uh, recent CD release mm -hmm. last Thursday at. at uh, Hernando's Hadway. I see Jack Rao there. Jack Rao, yeah. uh, Wampus Cats, the, the Fast Mothers. There we go. I had only known them like two years, but all these mm -hmm. people, uh, Southern Avenue, Free World, uh, Zigadoo Money Clips, Hope Claiborne. Hope Claiborne and her band actually backed up Valerie because mm -hmm. Valerie was under contract and she couldn't actually do it as Valerie June, uh, her, her career deal. But yeah. anyway, she did it with uh, Hope and, and this band. And uh, part of the um, uh, silent auction stuff, we got uh, Ardent Studios to donate us uh, eight hours studio time. Well, they wow. also uh, gave us a Studio A the night before the show so Valerie and Hope and the band could practice. Wow. So that was super cool. That's cool. Very cool. Uh, and all, this is your six, basically yeah, that, that based around my, your 60th birthday. Yeah, that would have been six years ago. And 66 you are wow yeah, yeah. Nice. Just turned so what what's she doing for your 70th yeah, I well uh, <laughs> you, we, we gotta work on that okay you gotta, gotta keep gotta the tradition going yeah. because yeah. remember danny you lost her career <laughs> that's right so she owes you every decade <laughs> well something I, I, I she probably disagrees that. with that <laughs> I, I, I um I, I just happened to be at the right place and and you know everybody uh that saw her that they um i i because I, like i said we chartered the whole bus yeah and i went back up to the guys and I, to the, everybody on the line, i said y'all got to come down here and see this girl and so yeah, yeah it, uh but she she doing great man doing that's great. very very cool and you know I, my 60th is not too far away eight years and you're you're pretty good friends with tora tora <laughs> I uh, sure am. So maybe we could. Uh, Jeff's going to find every angle, uh, yeah. one way or another, that leads to Torah Torah. Which I think yeah. is great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Don't stop. But well, it's going to be an ongoing theme. <laughs> that, that, that day at Neil's, you know, oh, Jeff, yeah. said, Jeff says, Danny, Danny. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. Sean Patterson yeah. over there. Please introduce me. Yeah. And so, uh, like so school girl, yeah. like a kid in a candy yeah. store. Yeah, so school anyway, girl. We, uh, we went outside, took some pictures, introduced, let them yeah. walk some drummer shop. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, John, uh, John's his sweetheart too. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, now I got to, um, one of the things I love to do besides going out and, and shooting live shows is studio work. Right. I got to go into, um, American studios with Tora Tora. Cool. And, when was this? Um, about two years ago. Oh, wow. Recent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About two years ago. And, um, but yeah, yeah, I got with John. I said, John, I said, you know, I, I know y'all going to studio. I said, hey, hey, don't, yeah. don't forget me. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, they let me come in and Very nice. basic, basically just a fly on the wall, shutter ball, shutter bug with, uh, on the wall, you nice. know, fly on the wall, just um, taking snaps. And, uh, but, <clears throat> but you guys talk a totally different language. And I love that in the studio when, when y'all come back and listen to the playback and, decide well hey instead of doing this let's do a little of that yeah and, right but you get a front row seat to the creation it's awesome it's pretty cool and yeah. that's another thing when i was a kid that's what really got me in i'd open a double album and if it was like a studio shot i'm thinking man that's where the magic happens. right that's where it's really mm -hmm. getting cool yeah
Yeah. And so um, that's always intrigued me. So I love doing studios. I've got to. Uh, uh, we got a studio right here for you, Danny, right. if you want to, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Test uh, out a new lens or something. Yeah, I don't know. What yeah. do you got? <laughs> I, yeah. what, what's always fascinated me about the studio work for musicians is that board and all of oh. that gear and, yes. and i walk in and i'm like there's no way in hell a person can know what every one of those slides and knobs are. yeah that's why uh, they're worth every penny yeah like a and solid engineer it's and a producer unbelievable. Is on, you know, oh yeah yeah, yeah. They, um, they, they make it and happen. I, i've got to fortunate um to to to, to go in most all a lot of the studios in town i've done ardent i've gone to um uh sun sam phillips uh royal Man Royal, once again, Valerie June calls awesome. me up uh, right before the uh, 2020 jump. And um, she goes, what kind of camera do you use? And I thought, that's kind of a weird question. Yeah. But uh, I told her, and she goes, well, look, I'm recording at Sam Phillips and then again at Royal. And uh, would you, uh, it's for my new album, but you got to be quiet. And so I ended up with 10 shots inside of her album. So that was really Very cool. That's so, awesome. Dude. That's no, so yeah, cool. No, full, full Your circle. portfolio is insane. Full That's circle. Great. You know, she paid me five times what I paid her. Yeah, because you <laughs> wanted a <laughs> career. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, I mean, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, but but um, Royal was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'd go in there on a, a cold winter afternoon. I had no idea what to expect, but it was uh, uh, they'd already laid the the, the basic tracks, right. and they needed this back, background vocal. Well, guess who it was? Carla Thomas. Nice. Okay. So uh, did you get some fit, photos with her? Yeah. Oh yeah, Carla. But before well, who's, they, where's she from? Let's Carla just... Thomas is Rufus Thomas's. Uh, daughter she's okay. probably in her 70s or 80s now oh, okay. um she's been around forever blues um, okay. but for two hours before they ever started recording carla was telling old road stories sure i'm talking like in in las vegas so and Los Angeles. everyone's captivated oh, oh yeah. yeah we're just uh <laughs> boo mitchell and, and yeah uh, so it's got you know you know boo oh yeah um boo no, i don't and, know him i know who he is okay maybe well, at one you know, day i'll uh, get to meet him yeah well uh boo uh valerie and boo's mom and his aunt yeah. that's all that was in there right and so yeah for two hours i get to listen to carla thomas tell stories and yeah, it, was, man. it was fascinating and then um, some nice perks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's um yeah, it's crazy. And, and for camera. for everybody listening that that may not be in the Memphis area, uh Royal Studios is a, a big historical place in Memphis where music is recorded and and you might know Bruno Mars is mm -hmm. one of the the most recent mm -hmm. huge names that's recorded yeah. there. Mm -hmm. so. And I think it's worth highlighting cuz to the outsiders, Sun Records that's Memphis. Yeah. Then you go a little deeper, Stacks. Right. Yeah. But that other one, like, I didn't learn about it until I moved here. Yeah. And started hearing about it. You know, so it, it's cool that you're highlighting it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, another thing that I, I really appreciate about your method and how you, how you handle the transaction. I love how you deliver the photos to the bands, you know, because... You throw them all up on Facebook, and you and you tag, and really throw. You have big reach, sir. Well, you know, and, you know and that, it's really cool. So it helps promote them and yourself, and then and then it's a platform for the artists to go grab their photos. You, you know, know exactly. Uh, you know, Facebook has a lot of uh, a few negative traits, but but for me, if it wasn't for Facebook, sure. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be sitting here yeah right. um uh, but yes i learned early on the way to get my photos out there mm -hmm. was to come see a band find out jeff's name derek's name oh, man, derek's right. name uh, you know all, everybody's name in the band right then i'd go home and i'd friend request them while i'm working on the pictures so that they would have time to accept i'm loving this story right yeah now. this and, is how uh, this is how i like to operate you know? <laughs> and so <clears throat> then um as as they accept, uh, even if they didn't accept me or or didn't even see it yet, mm -hmm. I would still maybe tag them when I would write out my description. Yeah. Bass yeah. player is uh, Darren. Yeah. You know, drummer's Jeff right. Ward. And even then, sometimes it's sometimes you can't find the person. Right. So. Yeah. There's times, yeah. but for the most part, that's yeah. how I developed my base. Um, and, mm -hmm. and then now I've reached my Facebook. Limit, five, on, which is 5,000. 5, well, I'm a long and, way from that. Uh, and uh, so I'm having to kind of go back through and maybe delete uh, some people that I don't 
really see much. I'm of, thinking uh, maybe put him in charge of marketing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. honestly, we kind of did the similar thing with mm-hmm. this. We came out of nowhere, and, yeah. And Jeff was really the one behind, like, oh, let's tag these this band, right? He would bring bands up in conversation, and then share that with them and tag them, so they, hey, we talked about you, right? Mm-hmm. You know, similar thing, mm-hmm. and people enjoyed that. It seems. Yeah. Because yes. now we got a nice little following already. Right. Yes, yes. So no, that's Facebook sounds... again, another win for Facebook. Right? Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, and another thing I love doing is always going through the birthday list. You, you've mm. probably seen me post a lot, um, like Doug Davis the other day with Backstreet Caller Man, drummer for him. Uh, I just go back through and I find about five or six photos, tag them, wish them happy yeah, birthday, and, right. and, 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 um, just keep it out there and yeah, keep, yeah. keep my photographs out there. And just, yeah. yeah uh, like I know TikTok and Instagram is like the new the hot thing right now, but look, I'm none I'm, of them, I'm, none I'm of old them, school. but yeah, but <laughs> none of them, none of them have that kind of connection no. the way Facebook does, no. the way you can converse and tag. I, mm-hmm. I find Instagram to be kind of, I, I'm just connected to Instagram off. by Facebook. So whatever I post on Facebook, yeah, I, right. but, but I don't even know how to navigate. Instagram. Especially you, though, because your medium is so visual. Mm-hmm. So that is tailor-made for Instagram. But the conversation is not as easy on Instagram. Right. Facebook, you can have a conversation. Mm-hmm. It's just slicker that way. Yeah. At least how my experience. Yeah. Instagram sort of locked off. It's like shut off in its own little, you know. And then TikTok, I just, I, I have nothing. Well, I'll tell you another thing, about, <laughs> uh, another thing about Facebook that um, really used to excite me, and it still does. Um, but I tried to keep up with it for a while, and it was happening so fast I couldn't. But so many musicians and people I photographed used those photos for their uh, profile pic. Oh, just, yeah, yeah. And it was like, absolutely. Th- I would have bands. Of I'd, wa- I'd walk in, and they go, oh, oh, good. We get some new profile pics. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> so, what's genius also is you brand them. You mm-hmm. put your little you put yeah, your logo. Model, little, Dude, little, genius. Little watermark, yeah. yeah. It's, genius. it's just real simple. It's just, yeah. and, and I've always been one for dates. That's why you <clears> see my DD. With the 2022. That's whatever. great. Yeah. Um, and it also helps me when yeah. somebody calls up and says, Hey, can you get me a high res shot of this? And I have to go back and find it. At least I know what year I'm looking yeah. for. Right. It's so well thought out. And I, that's why you're always so busy because all they have to do is see your work. And then once they meet you, forget about it. You, you know, like they're always going to come back when well, they need a photographer. Thanks. You know? And you know, that, that leads me to this. I, I had a, a client just last week met through somebody a referral um he's a blues man that's been he lived 30 years in los angeles in the blues scene in los angeles well when he was younger he he served uh, at the military up at the millington base and he said the blues kind of died out in la and and uh, his wife wanted to move to houston so he says well let's go to memphis and visit memphis first and so she came here and they fell in love with it and stayed mm-hmm. here well what I'm getting at is he, he he hired me and he's hired me twice now, and he said I'm the easiest photographer that he's ever worked with. And I'm thinking you've been doing this all your mm-hmm. whole life. I mean, right. what did I do? And he said, man, I don't know. You're just easy, you know. Mm. I don't know, I, but I just try to get along and and just well, dude. I, I mean, I, I just just be me. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. well, there's a reason why I hired you too, my friend. <laughs> I haven't even <laughs> talked about this yet, but this studio is going to get a ribbon cutting. February 7th. I'll be and uh, first thing I thought of is I want it captured and who am I going to call but Danny. Yep. Danny Thanks. Day. Thanks. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. Oh. Uh, and that kind of bridges me to uh, more of a personal story between you and I because you and I have some mutual friends yeah. here in Hernando. Yes, we do. And I'm going to go see them. After. Chip, and, Chip and Christy, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So Chip Johnson, the mayor yes. of Hernando. The mayor of Hernando. Uh, I, I had met him because of the Real Hernando podcast, I yeah. interviewed him for the my other podcast I executive produce and host for the Hernando. So, one of the nicest guys you'll meet. Like I can say a lot. I, I mean, I I can't say enough good things about Chip Johnson. He's just a fun guy, and we're going to talk more about him. But to the point where you know, I built a little. I've been building a relationship with him. I see him at ribbon cuttings, and and it's really cool. He's finally been in the studio. But yeah. go back to the show that you did for us. Uh-huh. At the uh, sidecar, uh-huh. you—I uh, forget how it came up. Maybe you saw that I posted something. I don't know, but the mayor came up, and we realized that we we're mutual friends in a way. Yeah. But the real connection is 
his wife, Christy, and you're hunting. Yes, yes. So, yeah, so let's break away from the photography music. Yeah. and music and everything, because uh, because of Chip and Christy, uh, you are a fanatic hunter, yes or no? Well, I, I'm, I'm not as mad at the deer as I used to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, uh, but I do love hunting, yes. And I was also a late bloomer at hunting. I was almost 40 before I started hunting. Um, but I do love it. We have a family farm uh, that's been in our family since the Civil War. Huh? Mm. Uh, my grandmother's grandfather settled there after the war in 1864. Wow. And um, still an old frame house there. And, and uh, we, we have I, a lot to talk about off, I, I, off camera. I, 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 <laughs> Tim Bills told me this morning that y'all have a big farm. Yeah. Um, Jeff does. It, it, I have an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> no, my wife does. I'm just <laughs> hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, though, uh, yes, I met Christy at South Main Sounds where I got started. Okay. Uh, okay. She came there to see Jimbo Mathis one night. Jimbo is the lead singer of a band y'all may have heard of called the Squirrel Nut Zippers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he's the lead man. And so she came to see them, she and Chip. And we got to talking after the show, and I don't even know how hunting came up, but it mm. came up. And um, I was like, ooh, we got we got to get together. So she and Chip you actually Chip to the side. No, Chip, I, <laughs> Chip is, Chip's never really been hunting, but she brought yeah. him to, or they came together to our farm. Um, we did not have any success, but uh, we sure had a good time. Yeah. And they're great people. I, I love them. I'm so, going to go visit them here a minute after we let, get down here. There mm -hmm. hasn't been a ribbon cutting or some kind of luncheon I've been to in the chamber where if I bump into Chip and Christy or just one of them, your name always comes up uh, well, every there, there's, time. There's like, you, I, and honest, I think you might have been the connector. Yeah. And then we started talking music because Chip and Christy are huge music fans. Yes. Okay. They yes. really are. They, and they like the indie stuff. And well, they, and they, the and they really here? support What's the thing original also music have here on the square? The music on uh, the summer? Well, they have Sunset on the Square Sunset. and Hometown Headliners, but it's all cover acts. Yes. Okay. You know, uh, there's shout out to uh, Stephen Michael, Mississippi Music. Yes, I do know Stephen. So he, he needs to be on this podcast too. Uh, okay. He was on The Real Hernando. That's how I met him. Mm -hmm. um, and he does a lot of good original showcasing yep. and stuff. Yep. Um, and that's similar. But, to what but so Chip and Christy are big supporters of those types of events. Gotcha. They really like the original yep. indie stuff. Exactly. But yeah, so uh, so that's how we met. Uh, music brings so many people together. Yeah, no, yeah, sure, uh, yeah. It, it, of yeah. all kinds. You know, we're using our experience and history and connections as musicians to pull from to make this thing happen. Right. You know, and what are we talking about? Music yeah. and, mm -hmm. and bands, and and you're not in a band, you're not a musician, but you're integral to this community. Well, let me tell you something else that happened that I'm not even sure you're aware of. Um, uh, in 2018, I got a phone call from Tamara Cook, who is the business administrator for Cooper Young uh, Business Association, asking me if I'd be interested in booking the largest single day festival of the state which is the Cooper Young Fest. Yeah. So I've been booking Cooper Young since 2018. Cool. I kind of was behind the scenes for a little while, but um, it, it's uh, we did have three stages, but uh, we lost one of the stages due to const some construction. But we have two stages with a total of 12 acts, seven acts on the main stage and five acts on the Grizzly stage. And um, Damn, that's, that's some running around for you, isn't it? Oh, it's fun, though. Yeah. I mean, so just another avenue for me to meet so many oh, uh, yeah. other other well, bands. And, and, of course, a lot of them that I'll photograph come to, hey, man, can yeah. you book me? And, and get this. Yeah. We, um, we have so many bands. And once again, it's all original. Mm -hmm. We don't allow any cover. As a matter of fact, we'll, we, people, can we at least play one cover song? Well, we've tried that. And mm -hmm. they would abuse it and yeah so yeah uh, the board there's just, plenty of places to see, to see cover, that right and nothing against cover bands nope but let's no, give some is, room and showcase originals for, we have know. a five-year rotation so if y'all played this year you couldn't play for five more so it gives okay. other people opportunities sure. there's that many it's bands great. that want to you don't play. get the same you know three or four bands just every year yeah. flying right. through mm -hmm. the place right right so <clears throat> uh like the fast mothers they uh they were one of the first ones i i brought out i had fever tree well the first year i did it you know I, I rock and roll is really 
my blood. Sure. And and uh, I was a little heavy on the rock. I had under the uh, radar, which you know, yeah, I didn't see you as Bruno uh, Mars <laughs> type of guy. I, I had uh, under the radar. I had Fever Tree. I had uh, Shotgun Billy's headline, and and uh, it was a little strong on the rock side. But uh, uh, but we are very diverse. We um, sure. have uh, Memphis has so many genres of music and right. Um, mm. It's man. It's, I'd be remiss if we didn't bring something up, Jeff. We almost forgot when we were talking about the uh, what we wanted to bring up. Okay. Okay. I, I thought you saw my note. I threw your way. <laughs> no, I'll let you do it. You do it. Um, and I can't believe I almost forgot to talk about this. It's the Hall of Fame, the Blues oh. Hall of Fame. Oh. Because you had classic, classic photos of you and Robert Plant and, and Priscilla, uh, Priscilla, Priscilla Presley. Presley. Yeah, that was cool. You know, I, would, I used to be a little intimidated at first with other photographers. A little starstruck. Oh, oh, oh. With other it's photographers. Other photographers. Room. Gotcha, but, gotcha. But um, uh, Steve, uh, I met Constantly. Steve Roberts. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> and he he is the house photographer of Lafayette's. Okay. So I was at the Lafayette's uh, Tommy Awards um, mm -hmm. here last year, which was their first or inaugural award show. Tommy being the um, previous on, or the only mm -hmm. past. And... Um, Steve came up to me and introduced himself. Uh, I said, well, I'm, I'm Dan. He goes, I know who you are. <laughs> and I'm like, holy cow, here's, you know, this guy is this, the house photographer. He shoots all the, the paid, the big, like Samantha Fish shows mm. and stuff like that. All right. And, um, uh, but anyway, he and I just buddied up, man. I mean, just hit it off. Shocker. <laughs> well, I he, mean, it keeps coming he, back to that. He's, right? loaned, he's loaned me equipment. And then <laughs> one day he calls me up and says, what are you doing on September 15th? Well, that was two days prior to the, the Cooper Young Festival. And I'm mm. thinking, well, that's a Thursday night. Wow, what you got? I said, um, I'm free. And he says, well, we're at the Memphis Music Hall of Fame. And he said, I, I need a second shooter. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I like I had, that terminology. I need a second shooter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he, he he was the main shooter, right? Sure. And, and so um, I was just the second guy. Well, he was out front at the stage, and my job was we had a backdrop in the back, uh, backstage. And so as the celebrities came off the stage, it was my job to round them up and hey, let's get some backdrop pictures. You know, just, nice. You know. Meanwhile, so, he can stay inside, and so he's yeah. he's out front shooting the show. Mm -hmm. And in the crowd. And so I had already uh, met Priscilla. Um, I got to shoot them prior to the actual show uh, down in the hallway of the dressing room. And then um, they came off the stage. Actually, I was standing with, right beside them on stage as Priscilla was getting ready to be inducted. And, and um, uh, when they came off, I, I got their shots and all this. And another guy had um, I had kind of buddied up with, they had to walk down this hallway and um, kind of wait for a break in the action before they walk back to their table. Mm -hmm. And so my buddy was down there. And he goes, come on. I said, are they still there? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, man, I took off and I'm getting my phone ready for, you know, a self selfie. And and I walked down there and, and Robert and Bob, Robert was, uh, uh, and Priscilla were talking to, um, actually, Jerry Lee Lewis's manager and his brother, uh, J.W. Williams and his brother. And so I just kind of went up and I was like, Hey, Mr. Plant. Uh, <laughs> hey, Mr. Plant. Do you mind if I get a selfie? And <laughs> and uh, Priscilla kind of started to step away, and um, I said, "No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I want you in it too." And 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 JW goes, "He said y'all." <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, man, I just common up, southern boom, term. Boom. And uh, did you have a chance to talk at we, all? We really didn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wished we could have, but yeah. um, I did hear him speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't get that. Must be surreal. <laughs> sure, I really didn't. Get it must to. be surreal. Really didn't get to have a conversation per se, but yeah, I got Priscilla. Uh, oh, Ronnie Millsap was there that night. So oh, I got, awesome! I got pictures with Ronnie Millsap. Yeah. I took their pictures. Um, yeah, so that was that was a fun night. And that was fun. I love Ronnie Millsap. He's one. He's one of my favorite country artists. Well, you know why uh, he was inducted? Because he's not from Memphis, but. In the early days of Elvis, he was the keyboard player before he went to Nashville. I had no idea. He, he was playing keys in the studio with Elvis. That's great. You gave me one word before the interview. I'm going to let you take this one. Dylanite. Uh, <laughs> so please tell me the story behind that word. Well, you you can do it. Take it away, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I know we have billions and billions of fans well, out there watching. Yeah, that, uh, that's, that's Mr. Tim Dills of Fever Tree. Um, 
uh, uh, I think Rocco, actually, the bass player, Rocco, I think pretty much came up with that term. But gotcha. Um, some we, I don't know. He used a picture of mine one time, and Rocco says, "Yeah, he's uh, 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 that's Tim Dills. He's has billions of fans." <laughs> and <so> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now Are you, you get just it? now get it. <laughs> now you get it. You're slower <laughs> than I am. We're gonna introduce a new sound. <laughs> I've been waiting to play this. I'll explain later. Okay. <laughs> Squirrel is our sound when I lose concentration. <laughs> and I ADD the hell out of an interview. So my apologies. Yes. Uh, yes. So yes so. The Santa video, the moving mouth, and calling uh, out, yeah. calling him out because he not didn't get mentioned. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, well, uh, just so Tim, I, I hope you're watching this, but er, before we went on camera, I, I made the comment about being a billionite, and Danny said, Tim hates that shit. <laughs> All right. I said, well, that means we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm going to make up for my... Y'all talk. Okay. And I'm going to find the audio and play it. Okay. So y'all talk, please. Okay. Well, uh, now you're putting us on the spot. Yeah. That's One, two, three, go. Go. All right, so... Um, yeah, so Tim and the billions and billions of fans, that's that's where that came from. Yes, and, uh, that's that's it. Uh, he, uh, yeah, I don't think he's super fond of it. Uh, maybe it draws too much attention. Well, well, somebody did make a comment on, on Facebook. Um, it may have been Rocco, but one of them said that it, it takes thick skin to be in that band. And, uh, and, and I thought well, that was funny. Um, that, that, you know, I, both the Fast Mothers and, and Fever Tree, kind of consider me the extra member of the band yeah. and so I've, I've i go to their um practices and yeah. stuff sometimes and and yeah um i i kind of chimed in on that one time and mark retardo goes yep yep you're part of the band you're yeah. you're in you're in well <laughs> i see they make they, they get As pretty Tim tucks his head and walks out the door <laughs> they get pretty tough on john patterson sometimes and i'm gonna i'm gonna have to back john up we, we drummers have to stick together so i'll i'll Take up for John whenever I see these guys giving him a hard time. Well, John's can, ready. John can dish it out. Yeah, we're ready. You guys Good. ready? Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's me, Tim <laughs> Deal. Next to me is my beautiful wife, Gina. <laughs> Recently, I was on an amazing podcast called The Rhythm Section. <laughs> I was on there and talked music for a while and had a really good time. And after the podcast aired, I had billions of people email me and ask me, Hey, Tim Dills, don't you have a bass player in your band, too? <laughs> well, the answer to that is, yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I don't want to tell you his name just yet. Or if you listen to the very end of the podcast, the last 2.3 seconds of it, I do mention his name. But for all the billions and billions of fans out there, I will be releasing his name on the next podcast. So stay tuned and make sure you hear out from me, Tim Dills. <laughs> and, and, and watching the video too makes it. But yeah. I, I just, I'm so glad that came up organically so we could play that. Cause, <laughs> well, and after that, Tim threw us under the bus pretty hard because he made a comment that he, he actually talked about Rocco for a good 15 minutes and we edited all that out. <laughs> so, <laughs> hmm. I was not aware of that. Thanks, Tim. Hmm. I need to have right. a chit-chat with somebody on that one. This thing went off the rails in a hurry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, we're having fun with sounds, right? Yeah. So, so uh, let's see. What can we talk? Uh, let's talk Midtown because I lived in Midtown uh, for about three years. Uh, mm -hmm. Car and Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So the the west end of the bubble, if you will, mm -hmm. just outside of Central Gardens. And I know you're a big fan of Midtown, and well, I am too. Uh, I'm in Hernando, where absolutely where I want to be. That's my own personal journey. I just I'm so glad to be here. But my heart is always going to be in Midtown too. I love Memphis, uh, and I love living in that area. So I know you do too. Well, I, I worked on at Tooth Commercial Printing or uh, Tooth American Digital uh, on Cooper um, mm -hmm. for the last well twelve years, but right before I uh, retired, and um, so I bought a house there in Mid. Uh, east end of Midtown, mm -hmm. where this union runs up on Cooper. I mean, on uh, Poplar. And um, it's great but anyway, yeah, um, Lafayette's is you know one of the places I like to frequent as far as music goes. Um, 
uh, and they've made me feel so welcome there too. And of course, there's all kinds of clubs around uh, Cooper Young, um, you know, DKDC, and uh, just uh, a bunch. And then, of course, you know, you can go on to town and, and Bill Street. I've shot mm-hmm. all those all those clubs down through there too. It's it's, um, but yeah, I do like Midtown. Um, it's just been my home uh, for the last fifteen years or so. And you've seen some good change. Some oh, yeah. positive change in Midtown over the last decade. Even I remember when I moved here in 2011, Overton Square looked oh, a lot different. Yeah, yeah. There was there was plywood planks oh, on, yeah. on windows still in mm-hmm. some spots. Mm-hmm. Now look at it. It's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Overton Shell. Yep. Um, and let me throw a plug out there. Cole Early, who is the videographer for Overton Shell and has been for years, has put together a uh, museum. Uh, in the green room backstage uh, and and they're doing five dollar tours five bucks mm-hmm. and listen so much history back there uh, you can't absorb it in one one visit uh, so I really highly suggest you go uh, contact Overton Shell or Cole Early okay. mm-hmm. and um, and check that out because it is it is very interesting uh, it goes from the history of the beginning of the shell uh, all the way through the changes and ownerships and what have you, and all mm-hmm. the people that have played there. Right. Uh, it's, it's very, very interesting if, as far as a musical tour. Nice. Well, you know, we're going to be uh, close to wrapping this up here. Um, I always like to uh, let the guests do some call to action. So coming off of what you just you know promoted, uh, is there any other place you'd like to address or highlight? And then we definitely want to highlight all of your you know, where people can find your work, which is your Facebook page, which will be. Yes, I am retired now and (laughs) and I'm on a a limited budget. So yes, please, (laughs) please call me. (laughs) Call me. But uh, is there any other place that you'd like to highlight? Uh, Gosh, not to put put you on the spot here, but you know, before we, before we wrap up, give you the floor. Okay. We we mentioned Neil's earlier, but let's talk about Neil's. Neil's is great. Uh, You know, (laughs) Neil had, y'all probably don't know this, but, he originally started in a little shotgun uh, shop um, restaurant right across from the Methodist Hospital in Union before it was over on uh, uh, Madison and McLean. Okay. Mm-hmm. There, there, I didn't know that. Yeah. He had a little shotgun place there and then, then went to Madison and McLean. And when it burned, of course, it went to Quince. Mm-hmm. But, uh, man, talk about a supporter and, and yeah. especially for, for benefits. For yeah. sure. Oh, my gosh. We, know, we've uh, mentioned him several times uh, yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. And of course, the, the, Niels is always going to come up. Sure. That's what, that just is what it is, you know. It's just a staple. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mark Goodman is an old friend of ours. You know, yeah. unfortunately, you know, God bless his soul. But he yeah. was a big Niels supporter. And yeah. anytime he put on anything, yep. that Niels. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and that's where I met your dad. Yep. Yep. That's Niels. Cool. That's, that's <laughs> so... Tell people where they can find you. Do you have a website? I don't. I need. Okay. I need to. I need to get one. Um, I've had some offers to help help me build one. I just haven't done it. Yeah, I, yeah. I get it. But but it's time Fa- to, Facebook is the, the Facebook's big one. really it. Um, okay. But mm-hmm. and, and and in the about section on his page, you have a PayPal link. So in essence, and some different. Tell me about yeah, that. So, well, people, actually, so people can access. Uh, you well, know, it, you yeah, on my on my cover page, I do have the the electronic uh, yeah. transfer um, codes. But um, and I got to thank Sean Few uh, really for yeah. that. Uh, Sean um, during the Tommy Awards, he posted my Venmo. and and I got so many tips. And thank all of you people for those tips. That's awesome. Nice. Um, it, it really helped at the time I needed it. And um, and then I got to thinking, you know, um, Graham Winchester, he's another drummer in, in, in Midtown. Um, I saw a post by Graham one time. It said, you know, if you don't promote yourself, who will? Yeah. And so I thought, you know, why not? And so I, I try to put a plug at the end of every post now. Because now I'm, I'm not doing it as fun. I'm, I'm doing it for myself, but <laughs> I, I'm doing it. Uh, when you call me up, I'm going to. Put a dollar price on it. You sure, know, I, 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 uh, dude. I, of course. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no. I, I, this for, is a, but for years. This for is years. business, brother. For, yeah. You have earned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your right to uh, request money yeah. to do what you well, do. Zero I, shame. I, 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 just, I, I just asked for <laughs> tips, but I, sure, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I, he's doing it for free for me. <laughs> I, mean, I did ask. I asked him. <laughs> 
No, of course not. No. Yeah. Well, I, I, I used to do it, and, and but that was my love for music. Yeah. That, yeah. The Memphis music scene. Hey, you can love music and still make money. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, um, I've, I've, when I was doing uh, Cooper Young, first doing Cooper Young, says, you know, um, well, I've heard, I've heard musicians say before, well, we just don't want to do it. We just don't want to play for exposure. We, yeah. we, we're already out there. We, uh, we need yeah. to get some money. Sure. Well, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, I. I I don't know. I, I do feel bad about it, but no, uh, don't. Uh, you, you, you know, if me and Jeff are saying stop, that means no. Okay, like, we're not. <laughs> yeah. We're not the judge, jury, executioner yeah. here for your emotions <laughs> behind charging money. But as a friend, dude, yeah, yes. Money. Oh, come on, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, anyone yeah. else would agree with that. All right. Yeah, you you are you are talented, and you have an awesome little model. I just love. You know, it's it's simple. It's Facebook. This is how I deliver my photos. You yeah. brand them. The way you connect and tag, you put your you put your your codes up there, and and it's just neat. And, and it, people are just going to keep coming back. But man. you know, besides just getting their names and knowing their names, I've become friends with these people. Like, oh yeah. Oh, the uh, networking just, is. Uh, that, key. Yeah, you know yeah. that's something I did learn from my dad. Um, I've watched him, and and believe it or not, I was pretty much a shy youngster, but. I, I just uh, watch him, and and I mean, I can't. I've never seen a conversation. He met somebody for the first time, and they didn't know somebody that knew somebody. Oh, right. One yeah. to two degrees removed from everybody. Yeah. So. Me and Jeff are uh, thanks to Jeff again because no, he knows the people to call. It's just amazing the kind of people that we're going to end up meeting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's no. really. It's just and, that's my favorite part. And getting and I to will, sit across from you and talk. You know, I will great. gladly help you. Hey. Round up some people. We'll, if, yeah. if we'll you take need. all the help we can get. Um, I mean, we have no shortage. No. Booking no, I, guests. I, the only problem we have with booking guests is keeping up. I'm, I'm yeah. sure. I'm yeah. sure. That's our problem. <laughs> and then editing yes. and getting it aired. Yeah, we have our flow now. We have yeah. our production flow. And, uh, you know, um, but uh, it's it's awesome to meet awesome people yeah. in this room. And it's, and it's extra personal for me and heartwarming because it's, it's my my little space, which is nice. I get to I get to invite people to it. Well, That's I'm awesome. super impressed with it. But then, this but, is awesome. But then you personally, it's just been a joy. Well, yep, thank you doing this. You thank know? you. No, it's been a great great time. And awesome. we want to do it again. Absolutely. You're going to be a reoccurring character. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, right. Every, everyone is. Like right now, we're doing interviews, getting to know life story, history, yeah. and everything. But over time. You know, Danny Day is going to come on this show just to bullshit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and maybe not. pair you up with someone else. And there'll still be four of us and we'll just talk. I think maybe know? Tim Dills and Danny Day at the same yeah, time. We can, we can do these little concoctions. <laughs> like, yeah. Who do you want to mix? Right. 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 Let's, let's change it up. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So, well, um, yeah, there's uh, I've been honored to meet so many people and musicians and, 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 Go to all these studios with these people. I mean, Jimmy Fulp studio right around the corner here. Y'all. He's coming on. Yeah. Uh, and I just discovered he lives in Hernando. So he and I, I mean, I've been there with the Fast yeah. Mothers yeah. and a couple others. And yeah. he uh, and I are going to be having coffee very soon. Yeah. Man, uh, and I had, had I, I knew Jimmy played the drums, but man, I've watched him play guitar and sing. And yeah. you know, these guys are just uh, yeah. multi talented. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting to see his studio soon. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, happen. you'll like it. And any kind of reach we give people like yourself and Jimmy Falp and our past guests, you know, it, it thrills us. Yep. If you get a, the tiniest bit of reach because of this podcast, it yep. really makes us happy to highlight people like you. Well, yeah. thank you. You know, I appreciate it. 